if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed son. Stay blessed. There is one cry in my heart every time I prepare to come here. And that cry is that nothing and no one will stop what God is doing in our lives. You may not realize the extent of the revolution that is happening from this city and from this place and through our lives. But when God is done with us, then the world will know they will see an example of what God can do with men who are yielded. It may not look like it. The Bible says, I reckon, Romans 8:18, 8, that the sufferings of this present time, the constraints, the sacrifices you may have to pay, the, the resistance, the pain that you will have to go through, are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. I can see with the eyes of my spirit. I can hear the sound of the new church rising. I can see the rising in the thousands. They're coming from afar, coming from afar. I can hear the sound of revival, and I know That the hand of God is upon us. Yeah. And I hear the sound of revival spreading all over. Spreading all over. Oh. has been written in the volume of the book. Let our generation 
is salvage from the bondage of corruption. We make ourselves available. Prune us. Build us. Forge us, O oh God. Make us mighty men of power. Make us men of wisdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight I want to share something that I believe will change our lives forever. And I want us to please pay attention. See, when, when you understand the ways of God, you will love God more. When you understand the principles of the kingdom, and you see how that your life becomes predictable. Hallelujah. Then you will know that no power in existence can really tie down your destiny. It doesn't matter what the disadvantage has been. Just stay. There is a force. The Bible says how forcible are right words. There is a force that no power, not your background, not your mistakes, not your limitations can resist. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to just pray, just this one prayer and say, Lord, help me to be attentive tonight. I throw away familiarity. I embrace your word with the heart of a child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the Lord laid this message tonight, I was very excited because I know that this message tonight will apply to almost everyone, if not everyone. God has been teaching us all through this month of July strategies how to come into the realm of greatness, influence, to contend for that relevance. And I pray that these words that we receive will not stand against us in the days to come. That 10 years from now you will not stand and still be a failure and watch those who listen to what they are listening now. The same thing you are hearing. Many of our parents ignored opportunities like that. They kept laughing and mocking at those who were serious. And look at the heritage many of them have passed on to us right now. Suffering, pain, trouble, curses, yokes. They had every opportunity that every great man has today. But like many of us are doing, they did not pay attention. Being distracted by all kinds of things. But tonight I pray. That no matter how hardened your heart is, that for once, you will love your destiny enough to pay attention. The beautiful thing about life is no one will pay your price for you. No matter how stubborn you are, no matter how hardened you are, you can argue today, you can laugh and scorn at what God is doing. But the day of reckoning will come. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. This is a this is a bailout is, is an exemption program God is exempting many of us from so many things hallelujah hallelujah she she one Thank you for your love. We are not better than those who are going around in ignorance, confused. Listen, with what you know now, I'd like you to imagine the way your life would have been without the knowledge you have now. 
did you know that there are many people just like you used to be and they are equally confident believing that there is a great destiny waiting for them hallelujah but we thank god for his grace galatians 6 verse 9 i want to share something very powerful two people please mighty revelation tonight any two people just two gentlemen come sir thank you please stand here any other person yes sir thank you hallelujah by the grace of god we have been taught the revelation of the things that god desires to do in our lives please follow me we have been taught that God has an agenda and that he seeks to make us ambassadors. That there is a prophetic destiny for everyone. Say after me, I have a prophetic destiny. Say it, I have a prophetic destiny. And this is a revelation of the prophecy over our lives. Hallelujah. That there is something God wants to do. There is something God wants to make out of us. There is a debt that we owe our generation that we must pay in our lifetime. And that God is trusting us. Hallelujah. So this is prophecy. And on the other side, we have the manifestation and the fulfillment of this prophecy. Are you following me tonight? When we begin to walk in the experience of that which has been spoken concerning us. So many of us have been taught... What it is that God has written and said concerning you and your life and family and destiny. And through the eyes of prophecy, we can see that which God is going to do. We have in our minds a picture of the kind of destiny. But what I want to teach tonight is how to manage the seasons between prophecy and their manifestation. This is the greatest in my opinion, the greatest revelation that you need to cap up these teachings on influence and greatness and the kingdom. Because it is through this journey, brothers and sisters, that many fall by the wayside. Are you getting my point? It is through this journey that many never make it there. there it's, it's like a marathon. So many people, hundreds of people standing with all of their their athlete apparels but in the final analysis at the end only maybe less than one or two or three percent of those people ever arrive at the finish line and i want us to finish strong hallelujah many of us are at this season of our lives and we've been praying fasting and say lord explain to me what minute these things what is the mystery behind the things that are happening in my life what season am i in please listen tonight because god is about to speak to you galatians 6 verse 9 please read everybody one more time and let us not be weary in well-doing for in what? Hold on. In what? There is a timing in the spirit called due season. For in due season, not any time. Do not be weary in well-doing. I'm building up from what I shared last week. For in due season, we will reap. But there is a condition. What is the condition? If we... That means if we faint, what will happen? Although the due season will come, but we will not reap. Hallelujah. So there are two things there. There is a due season and there is a call for endurance. Call for strength. Call for continuity. Hallelujah. One of the most disturbing aspects of the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom is the concept of timings and seasons. 
There are very few messages in the body of Christ that attempt to address the issue of divine timings and the seasons of men's life. Yet the Bible talks a lot about the things that happen under the sun. And that anything under the sun is governed by times and seasons. Say after me, times and seasons. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 gives us an extensive description of the revelation and the power of times and seasons. And how that these things hold the key to our manifestation in this earth, in this realm. And that means if we do not understand spiritual timings, if we do not understand seasons, we may be equipped with the principles, but we will faint because we do not realize that God is working even at those times and seasons. So I want to teach on certain things that will bless us tonight. The Bible says for us not to be weary in well-doing. Hallelujah. He said for in due season we will reap. Last week I began to talk about how that the Bible gives us a mystery that time and chance happen to them. You remember that teaching? Hallelujah. And so that our, our, our part of the equation is not to sit down and keep waiting for the time. The Bible already gives us a guarantee that time and chance will happen to everyone. So rather than sitting down and waiting, where will my turn come? We spend the time doing what? Sharpening our abilities. So that when that time comes, we will be ushered into the realm of greatness, never to come out again. If you believe it, say amen. Let me talk about two concepts and then we'll build. Number one, write this word down, waiting. W-A-I-T-I-N-G Waiting One word that gets believers scared in the kingdom Many people have preached all kinds of messages But tonight I want us to examine these concepts I do my best by the leadership of the spirit To make sure that we leave no stone unturned As far as the journey to our destiny and our success is concerned Waiting one of the hardest things that can happen to a believer is to enter a season of waiting. It can be so frustrating, it can be so painful that it will take the ability and the strength of the spirit for you to survive that season. Please take note of what I'm sharing. No matter how anointed you are, no matter how great you are, if there is a prophecy upon your life, hear me, between that prophecy and the manifestation of that prophecy, a time will come in your life when you will step into this season of waiting. And it's important I teach you how it works in the kingdom. Otherwise, when you enter that season, you may be so confused and you will abort destiny, not knowing what is happening behind the scenes. Is somebody getting blessed already? Because many of us right now are in this phase as I speak right now. There are individuals who are at these periods of their life and truly they are confused. Because this season rattles your convictions. Everything you have believed comes under the test when you come to this season. Your ideologies, your beliefs, your prayer life, your dexterity in the spirit, your endurance, everything you have ever acquired through the world will come on that test. And if you cannot stand that test, brothers and sisters, you may stand from here and see Canaan, but you may never enter it. The fact that you have seen the vision, the fact that you have had the dream, is no guarantee. The fact that God spoke to you is no guarantee that you will arrive there. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? You saw yourself a mighty evangelist. You saw yourself a mighty apostle. In your dreams, you see crusades. You see a lot of things. In your dreams, you have seen that you are a financial apostle. You've seen yourself doing mighty things for the kingdom. I want to announce to you tonight that between the prophecy and its manifestation, 
are stages and principles. And one of those stages is called the period of waiting. And if you do not understand this, brothers and sisters, you may never arrive there. Proverbs 13 verse 12. Proverbs 13 verse 12. Let's hurry up tonight. Open your heart. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible explains to us, you see, look up please. I've spent my life not just studying on the kingdom, but studying about man. Because I'm a man. And I, I like to know what, what my, the components of my, my, my creation, my build up. I like to know what my strengths are. Not as a, my personality, but the general man. I like to know who man is. What are his limitations? What are his predicaments? What are the vulnerabilities that can befall man? This revelation helps me to know where to lean on God more. Hallelujah. And here and there I have found certain inevitable weaknesses that are fabricated in man. And it will take us understanding those limitations and leaning on the strength of God to supplement for our inadequacies at that time. Otherwise we will not last. One of it is this simple scripture that many of us have read again and again. One to read. Hope deferred makes what? When you postpone hope, when expectations are not met, the Bible says it can affect your spirit man. Are you reading it here? The word heart, there's the same word spirit. When you hope for certain things, by our natural design, we love winning. We love achieving. We love accomplishing things. Are you getting my point? We love seeing a sign of progress in our lives. Is someone getting what I'm, I'm, I'm saying tonight? The Bible says, when that hope that we have, that drives us into destiny, when those expectations that we have are not achieved when it is deferred, that means when it is postponed, the Bible says it has an effect not just in your physical body. It does not just create fatigue in your physical body. It affects even your spirit man. It said, but when desire cometh, it is a tree of life. When you achieve your goals, and you hold on to it, there is the joy that fulfillment and accomplishment brings in every man. Hallelujah. That means when the waiting period between your prophecy and its manifestation gets too long, if you do not understand the technology and the provision that has been made in the spirit to carry you through that process, you may never arrive there. Are you getting what I'm saying? Although anointed, although born again, the Bible tells us that there is, a, there is an inadequacy that is in man. That man does not have the, the ability to endure, to suffer long forever. That means a time comes in the equation of your life when your patience gets stretched out no matter how good and godly you are that means there must be a technology in the spirit that is able to hold you and take you to the place of destiny say amen now there are two dimensions to waiting and i want us to look at it number one is that waiting so that we don't confuse ourselves here waiting can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in Christ. We must get this. It's very important. Waiting can be a demonic strategy. Please write it. It can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in Christ. I must balance this straight up so that many of us 
do not sit down and allow the devil delay our destinies forever and then get convinced because if the word of god is not rightly divided the devil can use that it is written and convince many of us now who should be preparing for miracle service next week and say lord an end comes to this there are certain periods of waiting that are not defined they are not initiated by god at all are you getting my point now they are strategies from the kingdom of darkness to delay and limit us from entering our prophetic destiny that kind of waiting is called delay write it down the name given to that kind of waiting is delay delay satan's strategy to limit you and hinder you and stop you Paul said, once and again, I desire to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Satan can hinder men. Then number two, the second dimension is that delay can be a divine orchestration. Please get this. You must get this. That there are two dimensions to look at waiting in the kingdom. All of our teaching is within the context of the kingdom. That there is a waiting process and period that is orchestrated by the kingdom of darkness to limit us. And the name given to it is delay. But that there is a waiting period. There are these seasons that are divine orchestrations. Lamentations 3.25. Can we look at it very quickly? Is someone getting blessed already? Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, guys. We'll soon go and sit down. Okay, just go, just go, just go bless you so you can be writing it's very important that you write lamentations 325 are we there everyone please look up and read before you continue writing one to read the lord is good unto them that do what not wait on him wait for him Wait for him. It's a very difficult thing to wait. Very, very difficult. And this divinely orchestrated period of waiting is called process. Write it in the kingdom. It's called process. Process. So there is a difference between waiting as a process to your destiny and waiting as delay from the kingdom of darkness to destroy you and you must sustain the ability to discern so that you know whether to align and receive grace and might from god or to stand and take authority over the activities of darkness hallelujah process very important you will come to this period of your life whether you pray for it or not is part of the things that you will find and i'll be showing you from scripture how that many people messed up when they got to this season let me give you one example remember the nation of israel hallelujah they came out there was a prophecy given to moses even moses their leader did not enter the promised land Look up. Did you know that God never told Moses he was going to die on the way? Is that true? The prophecy that was given to Moses was that he was going to lead the people from the land of bondage into the land flowing with milk and honey. God never told him somebody will take out the baton. But between Egypt, brothers and sisters, and Canaan, only two people from that generation were able to make it only two people they all had the prophecy they rejoiced they joined moses after the the, the parting of the red sea to sing i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his rider because it had not stretched their patience too much but they came to a point look at all the things they did in the wilderness because they did not understand this operation 
And listen, if you do not learn the lesson, you will do the same thing. It's easy to talk about them. Thank you, Jesus Christ. A few thoughts about waiting that I want you to note. Number one, in the kingdom, please make sure you note that we are talking with respect to the kingdom. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. For many of us, our concept of waiting is to stand still, known to be motionless. But that's not the way it works in the kingdom. When you enter the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, it does not mean absence of progress. It also does not mean absence of advancement. That when you are in the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, it's not the same thing as saying you are in one spot, not making progress. To you, you think you are in one spot because there's no physical evidence to measure your advancement. But I'm telling you right now that behind the scene, there is a lot of advancement taking place. Number two, waiting in the kingdom is not necessarily delay. It is the process of preparation. I'm taking out time to read it because I don't want us to miss it. You'll notice in the last few weeks I've been teaching very carefully, reading almost directly from my notebook here because I don't want us to confuse and miss words and then for our online people, I want them to follow on thoroughly. Waiting is not necessarily delay. It is the process of preparation. Number three. Look up. I want to explain something now about waiting. One of the biggest things I've seen in the lives of people, and please listen, God is about to minister directly to us now, is that because we have expectations for something great about our life, we postpone all of our joy and gladness and shift it. Are you getting my point? To the future. So that we will take advantage of that joy when we arrive. And then we starve ourselves of joy during the waiting period. Are you getting my point? But the Bible tells us that the vehicle that carries strength in the kingdom is joy. I want to show you why a lot of people never arrive. During the waiting process, one of the things that we are vulnerable to face is the absence or the diminishing of joy. I'll give you an example. A brother wants to get married or a lady wants to get married. God has told you you will get married. Is that true? And you pass all the joy and say on that glorious day, when I wear my suit, you will see the dance I've never danced before. I would dance David's dance and laugh. But between now and that point, you will see the lady looking frowny, angry at everybody. Why? Why is God delaying me? And so we kill our joy. Are you getting what I'm saying? And we wait and we pack up everything and we keep pushing the joy to the future. And we never get blessed with the moment. That expectation kills our joy. We cry day and night. Oh God, when will I become a millionaire? I'm seeing it. Let me just enter this thing. And you see joyless believers. Angry and offended at God. Note this tonight. That waiting should never postpone your joy. You can be joyful while waiting. Never wait until you arrive. Your joy gets complete when you arrive. But that joy should start and go with you all the way. Because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is the strength that you will need. There is a difference between joy and happiness. 
If I give you one million now, there is every reason to be happy. That's not joy. Hallelujah. But joy is of the Holy Ghost. It's the strength and the sense of rest and merriment that comes based on the conviction of God's integrity. So when there is no physical evidence, you are joyful. He said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Look up, please. How many of us have killed our joy? There are so many people. You see a lady of 20 years looking like 50. Why? Say, I'm not in a relationship. God spoke to me. Am I the worst person in the world? No joy. You stand outside tomorrow morning and watch all the people that move. 90% of people are joyless people. They get up in the morning, there's no sense of joy and merriment. You ask them why. And they give you all kinds of legitimate reasons. And they believe that they are justified on the strength of those reasons not to be joyful. And they never arrive at their destinations. Is God speaking to someone tonight? That's what changed our parents. Many of them, when they got married like us, they were happy people. Eventually, their expectations. They expected that when the first child is five years, they would have been millionaires, established in their dream jobs, having their own homes. Unfortunately, they had wishes, but they did not understand the principles that will make it happen. So 15 years down the line, they are still crying for rent. There's nothing there. And you find your father old and angry. Now, don't insult him. It's the frustration, the pain and the bitterness that has been fast forwarded. Every new year, people are happy. Do you know why they are happy? Because it makes them forget about the previous year. And for the first one week, they dance. Many churches have all kinds of thanksgiving. By February, everybody is angry. Oh Lord, not again. Will this year pass without the child coming? Oh Lord, so this is how the husband will not come. This is how my admission will not come again. And then our joy. The devil keeps sucking out every ounce of joy. And by the middle of the year, everyone is already frustrated and cast out spiritually. You must sustain a revelation and a technology in the spirit. To make sure that part of the things that suffer, of all the things that will suffer during this waiting period, your joy should not be one of them. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because your joy will culminate to your strength. God is speaking to someone tonight. Waiting in the kingdom is an acknowledgement of divine timing. When you wait in the kingdom, when you follow through that period, you are acknowledging that God works with times and seasons and that you submit yourself to the process of how God makes men great. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything. joy waiting is an acknowledgement of divine timing everybody say divine timing say after me there is a season in my life and destiny when I will manifest say one more time there is a season and a timing there is a season of showing forth there is a season of manifestation. There is a season of display. Yes. You must recognize that there is a season. Brothers and sisters, it's called due season. Everyone say due season. Due season. The second word I want us to consider tonight before I begin to build is the word impatience. Write it down. Imp 
impatience. What is impatience? Patience that has been exhausted. Patience that has been exhausted. Tonight I speak like prophet Elijah that that cruise of oil that is left will not run dry. There is a technology that will refill it tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, impatience is deadly and is dangerous to your destiny. Write it down and underline it. Impatience is deadly. I, I think that's one of the greatest keys, in my opinion. One of the greatest keys that the devil has used to destroy Africans, Nigerians, and young people in general. Impatience. Impatience. What does it mean to be impatient? Impatience means getting ahead of God. Getting ahead of God. That's what it means to be impatient. You run ahead of God. You run ahead of His timing for your life. Impatience is a dangerous thing. God is speaking to us tonight. Because many of us are where we are at this point of our lives because of impatience. There are many of us that stress is almost killing us right now because of impatience. Hallelujah. Very, very important. You are a young lady. You are just 21. You want to kill yourself. If I don't marry by 2014... Let it not be that I'm a Christian. And you are yoking yourself. You fasted for two weeks. Which is supposed to be wonderful if it were for a just cause. But at 21, there's all kinds of pressure. And you can't wait. There's no, there's no patience. Impatience has driven many of us into all sorts of things. Everybody say, I receive grace to be patient. Abraham was a man in scripture who the tragedy of impatience caught up with him just write the scripture we may not read it for time's sake i want to hurry up and i want us to finish very fast in genesis chapter 16 from verse 1 to 4 well let's just let's just look at it very quickly genesis 16 1 to 4 that man abraham god had spoken to him now it was taking too long the result was not coming and the bible says in the 16th chapter now sarai abraham's wife bear him no children so this was an issue of barrenness versus the promise of god that he would be the father of all nations and she had a what please read and she had what and that handmaid was an egyptian whose name was hagar i want to show you the danger of impatience Every time impatience begins to grow in your life, you are about to wreck and jeopardize your destiny. Because very soon, there will be something around you that can be an option. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people have missed out on God's best for them because they could not wait. Two days to enter God's best. We made all kinds of decisions in our lives. Now Sarai said to Abraham, Behold now, the Lord had restrained me. Are you seeing her interpretation? That God had restrained from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid, that it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham did what? Because Abraham had been eyeing the girl since. It's just that he didn't have the courage. How will he now tell his wife? Are you getting my point now? Impatience will create pictures around your life. If by August a godly brother does not come, God is my witness. I will go anywhere. Even if it's my village and carry anybody. The 
the Bible says, Sarah told Abraham. I'm sure they have had quarrels and quarrels. And Sarah said, okay, this is a handmaid. She's younger than me. She can still be fruitful. Go ahead and sleep with her. And Abraham said, now you are talking. Abba, now you are talking. Let's, let's make this promise come to pass. Abraham did not argue. The young lady did not argue. Guess what? God too didn't say anything. The fact that you are doing things wrong and going ahead does not mean you are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Did you see that the lady got pregnant? The fact that you compromise and it works does not mean it's God that made it work. There are many things that can happen in this life without God. Marriage can happen without God. You can make money without God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can get the job without God. Oh yes. You can get the admission without God. It's easy to compromise and get the blessing. But every time impatience leads you to take action, get ready because an Ishmael will be born. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Look at verse 11. 11 and 12. Let's see the tragedy of this union. The product of the inability to wait for the word of the Lord. To wait for the seasons. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child. Listen. And shall bear a son and shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Verse 12. And he will be what? Was that what she planned for? Abraham, was that the blessing you were told? He said, This union will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. That means this troubler will be everywhere. Till today, the world has not recovered from the union. Less than one day of pleasure as a result of impatience. Jeopardize the generation. Who is about to jeopardize his destiny here? There's, there are people here that are about to make decisions as a product of impatience. Is someone getting blessed tonight? The nation of Israel in Exodus chapter 32 when they came out of Egypt Moses went upon the mountain for 40 days. Look at me. It was a waiting period. Is that true? They didn't see any progress. Whereas Moses was on the mountain intercussing with God. So something was happening. That they could not see it did not mean nothing was happening. Brothers and sisters, it looks like your life has been stagnant for years. You think you are stagnant. But if God should open your eyes to see the giants you have been conquering in the spirit. God is really ministering to someone tonight. It's not the way you have been looking at it. It's not the way you have been looking at it. Physically, you have not been in school for three years. But there is a progression. The Lord has been doing something. The job did not come. Five years after graduation, you are still struggling. And you believe you are like every other jobless person. Is that true? There is an investment of the Spirit in you. Only if you believe that waiting is not equal to delay in the kingdom. The nation of Israel could not wait. And what did they tell Aaron? Let's look at that verse. Exodus 32. Very quickly. Is someone getting blessed? Impatience can jeopardize your destiny. You can make mistakes that you may only be able to walk through. But never ever be able to cut out of your life. Hallelujah. And they told Aaron, they said, Moses is wasting our time. We don't even know whether he's dead or not. Please, 
we brought gold out of the temple. We remember that while we were slaves, we saw the Egyptians worshipping a god of gold. And it was the god that brought them out. Oh yeah, Aaron, come and build us this idol. Let's celebrate this idol. We can't wait. If there is God in heaven, why will he keep us in the wilderness for, for this long? 40 days. We didn't see Moses. He didn't tell us anything. And we are waiting. Let us build an idol. And while God was with Moses, advocating for the same people, they were destroying their own destiny by themselves. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings. They forced Aaron. They forced Aaron. Which are in the ears of your wives, and of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Verse 3. And all the people took the golden earrings. They were so desperate to come out of that season. They say, is it not earring? Take. Oh yeah, all the women, remove your earrings. Lest we need to carve out very fast. Never find yourself trying to help God in a process that is exclusively within His power to pass you through and bring you to a place of greatness. Many of us try to help God. Uza tried to hold the ark. He died, yet the ark never fell. Let's look at just one verse there and then we'll continue. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it into a graving tool. After he made it into what? A molten calf. And they said, This be thy God, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land so after two years, the child doesn't come. After praying and praying, oh, we trust God. And then somebody comes to say, there's one man who, it's not like I'm suggesting that he should go there. Me, my heart is me. Praise God. The man can pray. It's not like a habali. It's not exactly, it's not a pastor. It's not a habali. But he used to help people. He said, really? Two years ago when they told you, he said, no, 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 I'm a child of God. Two years later, you are almost gassed out and you say, eh, eh, let me talk with my husband about it. And you know men, when you are talking, it looks like they will say no. And then you are talking and you say, where is the man? You say, have you seen him? Who has he, who has he given uh, a child to? Say, let's be careful with all these people. Hallelujah. I counsel people and I am amazed at how much people fall when it looks like the word of God dwindles over their life just a little. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one lady who kept sending me text messages almost every day for one week. She said she believes that there are instructions I will give her for her marriage. I said, my dear, there's no instruction. I'm, I'm spending my life for hours shouting on Friday. Go and listen to Relationship and Family Life Series Part 1, 2, 3. The next day, they say she feels in her spirit that there is an instruction that will just open. You see, all these things is, is, is in innocence, but it's an act of impatience. Impatience will make you hear what God did not say. Impatience will create a road that was not of God. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Impatience will make you say yes to a guy that two weeks into the relationship you say, please, was I dreaming? Who did I say yes to? The guy will say, sweetheart, you say, me. I said yes to you. The guy say, you said yes. Now what is all this again? And ladies, please be warned. I don't know why as I'm talking, I'm coming into all this relationship. Thing. Maybe God is speaking to some people through it. Hallelujah. Ladies, don't find yourself putting pressure on any lady and say answer him now you said it's none of your business if it's not you they ask advice when you are invited otherwise stay away and pray many of us just come and say this guy is my personal person I know him I said you will be in the relationship and many people jeopardize their destinies is he born again he's a nice person does he love the word of God he's okay 
He doesn't smoke. He, he used to smoke and drink before, but Abba, in the last one year, even him, he told me. He doesn't lie to me, honestly. If he, you Abba me, he loves me too much to lie. Until the day he pounds your face when Abel resurrects and you find out that, that Cain, Cain, sorry, Cain is alive and active. And that guy beats the living daylight out of you. Or you enter his room and see another lady's clothes and the rest. And he says, so what? I'm a man. You said you're a Christian. You will not sleep with me. I can't. You are still my wife, but I have to find something to be doing before we get married. Impatience. Don't just laugh. I hope you are getting the message. It's a very serious message. Impatience brought the world under under all kinds of terrible things. Someone getting blessed. Let's hurry up. During the waiting period, certain things usually happen and I want you to take note of them. Number one is that you have the tendency to get weary, especially when you have obeyed every principle you know and there is no obvious change. Hallelujah. There are so many people that, that send me text messages and all of that and they say, Sir, I have been, I've been paying my tithe. God knows. I've been faithful I've been paying my tithe. I've sown seeds. I've done everything. I'm, I'm a worker in my church. Maybe a member of the, the, the decoration or whatever. I'm a member in this and that. Why is it not working? I've done everything. I've listened to every koinonia message. God is my witness. And I've been working according to the principles of the kingdom. So weariness can set in. Especially when you are truly obeying the principles. There are many of us who have truly been tithing. You've truly been giving. You've been submitting your prayer request, miracle service after miracle service. Nothing seems to have happened. But listen. Number two, your joy begins to fade. When weariness sets in, your joy, like I said earlier on, begins to fade. Number three, impatience sets in. I'm giving, you to it, I'm giving it to you now systematically so that you understand that these are the things that characterize seasons of waiting. The tendencies, the vulnerabilities. Number four, which is the most dangerous part, is that you begin to consider options and alternatives other than that which God has given you. Options. Options. Usually those options are devilish. Usually those options may even look spiritual. But that's not the blueprint of God for your life. When Jesus met Peter, look at me. When Jesus met Peter, I told him, come, follow me. I will make you a fisher of men. Is that true? But when Jesus died, just for three days, three days, Peter did not see Jesus for three days. His patience could not pass 72 hours. And in John 21, he said, Oh boy, I go a fishing. And the disciples said, We go with you. In other words, let's go back to a, an option that we know something about. And when Jesus saw him in chapter 15, thereabout, he said, Lovest thou me more than this? How many of us have given God options? God told you, You are going to be a great man of God. But he said, be patient. You were not patient. Now you have started a fellowship that is almost killing you. Only you and your best friend who is tired. He wants to leave. It's just that he doesn't know what to do with you. Only two of you. Every evening, only two of The person is tired. Because although you are genuinely called, but you cannot wait for timings and seasons. Hallelujah. I remember one, one pastor gentleman years ago, that guy is still struggling till today. And if he doesn't adjust, he may still be struggling till only God knows when. I remember his fellowship years ago appointed him and they said he was supposed to be chief usher. 
it was such an embarrassment to his personality. And he said, God did not tell him in the blueprint of his ministerial call that he will be chief usher. If they cannot honor the grace of God upon his life and give him something honorable. By honorable, he means maybe president of the fellowship or something close to it. See that? Many of us have etched ourselves out of the preparations of the spirit. We'll come there. Because we have given ourselves options. Options. Hallelujah. God gave you signs. He gave you symbols. He gave you tokens that will signify to you when certain things are his will. You have not seen them. The equation has not lined up. If God tells you something, 80% is still not God. You must wait until it looks like God. It's amazing how impatience can make a thing look like it is God. Whereas it is not of God. And so somebody comes and says, will you like to be a pastor in our church? And they say, thank you, Jesus. I knew it. You people are underutilizing my anointing. Anytime God did not send you, be sure that you will not see his hand. See, let me tell you, this is one of the reasons why people move ahead of God and they keep struggling until the season comes where God catches up with them and they call it breakthrough. Then they make another mistake again and they wait. Why don't you walk with God? It's dangerous to walk ahead of God. Hallelujah. Impatience. Some of our parents have put our families in trouble because of impatience. I must build a house this year. I must build a house this year. Because my colleagues have built houses. Me too, I must build a house. I must buy three cars this year. One for me, one for my wife, and one for the children. And some of you are part of the sponsors of this impatience. Daddy, do it. You can make it. I believe in you. And now we put all our parents under all sorts of nonsense pressure. Because there is no impatience. There, there's no patience, sorry. Hallelujah. Some of us are here. If you want to wear tomorrow's clothes today, get set to walk naked tomorrow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I must buy a suit of 100,000. You carry everything God has blessed you with now, home and abroad. You bought one suit and you will die for the remaining part of your life. Whereas that money came to buy books. Is someone getting blessed? And then the trouble is the jet age and technology has made matters worse. Hallelujah. We have 15 year old millionaires, 20 year old millionaires. So everybody just says, I, I must make it in this Nigeria. If there is a cake, I must cut my share or stab whoever is standing close to my share until that piece of my cake comes to me. And you know, there are all kinds of confessions and prayers in the church that encourage this lust. Kill every enemy that is covering your cake, your portion of the cake. And you know, we do all kinds of things in the name of prophetic activities. Events sponsored by hell to push us into impatience. Say, I receive grace to be patient. There are many of us here. Sister, your life would not be in the mess that it is if only you were patient. You said, all my colleagues are in relationships. And one guy just came, one of the lonely ones among the friends. Say, okay, I'm doing too. And look, from that day till now, it's been four or five years of hell on earth. Because you attach yourself to Hagar. And Ishmael is the product. Tonight, God is delivering someone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I will wait. Everyone say it, I will wait. I receive grace to wait. There is a difference between delay and process in the spirit. If you allow the devil to destroy your life. Listen, let me tell you. I, I shared with you a few stories last week. I remember when a few years ago, I would be invited to go and minister. Then there was no protocol, no nothing. And I will prepare fast and pray, right? 
and go and minister and at the end of it the people will not even say oh there is an honorarium who want to appreciate you and i mean i will fast for days as if i'm preaching in an international conference somewhere and then i'll go and sometimes it's when i arrive that they'll push people in front praise god and say there is a place and i remember i will never forget two pastors they came and met me they said man of god the kind of anointing you have there are some bishops that do not even have it why are you underutilizing this anointing many of us will hear that thing and say it's true it's true i'll never forget through the rain through the sun through whatever i will risk myself pay my own transport and get there i will never forget there was a gentleman from blw it was his suit i used to borrow when they invite me for ministration i'll borrow his suit in suleiman and then Janfa had one nice loafers. His brother gave him. He will give me the loafers. The only thing I had was maybe socks or something. You are laughing. Don't be carried away by suits and all these things. Because many of see the trouble with men of God is they never open up the process that led them to that place. They make it look easy, as if it just happened by one prophetic word. And many of us are already running. You're already calculating your offering and your honorarium by Christmas. You better wake up. The, the journey is still far in Jesus' name. It's not that I'm not prophesying that. <laughs> I'm used to saying in Jesus' name, forgive me. Hallelujah. You must learn to wait. You must learn to wait. And I will show you why. We are going to wrap up when I reveal to you why this process is important in the kingdom. I will never forget one time when I got an honorarium of 10,000. I couldn't believe it. It was like I was dreaming. 10,000 for preaching something that is my passion that I will live and die for it. Brothers and sisters, a time came in my life when even me, I started talking to myself. I said, ah, but God, why are people doing this to me? People took me for granted. They would have lists of ministers that they are bringing for programs. But they'll find out that the cost implication for holding those graces is so much. And then they'll run to this scapegoat called Joshua Selman. Sometimes two days to the conference, they will invite me and I'll go to prayer. I'll say, Lord, and the Lord will say, Go. It looked like I was a fool, but one day came. Due season. Due season. You do not qualify to enter your future if you cannot wait. Who is God speaking to tonight? God gave you a small business under 100,000. You've not been effective there. You're already dreaming in the name of Jesus in two months. I'll be riding a Jaguar. I'll be, you better stop dreaming and settle down and understand how things happen in the kingdom. Tame your lust and line it up with the seasons of the spirit. There is a difference between speed and foolishness. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people step into seasons that is not God. That, let's, listen, if you force a door to open, whether it's God that opened it or not, it will open. But the trouble is, when they ask you who sent you, you will turn back and find out that you've been going alone. Hallelujah. So what do you do as you await your due season? This is the crux of this teaching tonight. What do you do when your due season is yet to appear? When that waiting period gets so long, Lord, will the child come? Will the breakthrough come? When will you change my story? Every time I go to pray, you show me a great destiny. You told me a day will come. I will minister before thousands. I will be an international evangelist. 
you are giving me an international apostolic or prophetic ministry but as it is i have not yet seen it number one i'm giving you the formula brothers and sisters if you keep this secret you will survive the process between prophecy and manifestation you will find out that while men are falling by the wayside there will be a strength that will carry you number one during your waiting period you should do the following recognize that there is a divine timing and a due season it comforts you to know that your wait is not forever because God is not a man that he should lie not the son of man that he should repent Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8 won't turn there tells us that there is a time for everything under the sun the bible says john remained in the wilderness until his what season of appearance everyone prophesy to yourself my season of appearance is coming prophesy it. my season of appearance is coming can you turn it into a prayer in one minute i may not look like it now but my god there is a making and my season of appearance will come I have a portion among the great and the hand of God will bring me there. I will stay through. I may not be able to preach now. I may not have money in my pocket now. But there is a due season. It has been written by prophecy. Not the witches in my village can stop it. No power in existence. And I choose to wait. I choose to wait. There is a due season when I will drive the cars. There is a due season when men will run after me with jobs. There is a due season when so many men will come to ask my hand in marriage. There is a due season when my own family will dedicate their own building. Oh yes, time and chance happen to them all. My turn is coming. I know this for sure. A day will come. I will know what it feels like to be a kingdom millionaire. A day will come. That wedding ring will enter my hand too. But meanwhile I wait. A day will come. I will travel abroad. As though I'm walking from my house and going outside. I will enter the plane. A day will come. I will wear the convocation gown. A day will come. I will finally pass the job. There is a due season. The child will come. Barrenness does not last forever. Prophesy in one minute. Shake away unbelief. Shake away impatience. A day will come. I will have peace with my husband. I know it's a demonic challenge. There are ancestral powers causing this family problem. But there is a due season when the hand of God will visit my family. I know, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. I am persuaded. I may not see the wind. I may not see the cloud. It does not look like it will rain. But the hand of Jehovah, that hand that regulates times and seasons, my turn will come. I will be on television. My turn will come. The healing anointing will finally work. My time will come. When my profiting will appear, it's called my season of appearing. It's called my season of appearing. Hallelujah. Recognize that everything under the sun works by timings. 
So when men are pushing you into seasons you are not ready for, listen. I cannot tell you, God gave me an instruction. And God told me, he said, that he would use koinonia messengers like angels and messengers of fire and send them across the nations. And God specifically said we should never, not in this season of ministry, begin to sell tapes and do all of that. I cannot tell you how many people have called to say, man of God, you are robbing your ministry of millions of naira. I said I appreciate your interest, but there is a season. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So many people have spoken to me. Come and open Koinonia branch in Abuja. Come and open in Lagos. Come and do this. Come and do that. I told you in 2006, after our crusade in Joss, it was so powerful. The PFN said that we should come and open a branch of the ministry. They were willing to give pastors so that we would train and have an auditorium. I went to God and God said you would die. That was exactly what I told them. That God said I would die. Listen, many men of God today, do you know why ministry is killing them? Although God called them, they have opened other seasons for themselves. God never spoke to them to start a church. They started a church. Now they are wondering, no money, no nothing, no grace. There are many people, God told them you are an evangelist. They said I need a base so that I will have money. As though God cannot finance his work. Are you seeing how it has gotten a lot of people into trouble? Never do anything without asking God. Even if God said yes yesterday, ask him today again. Three days for us to start Koinonia, I went on a retreat. Three days I went on a retreat. And I said, Lord, it's not that I'm doubting you, but I want to confirm again. But adventure, it was my flesh that minister to me. Hallelujah. When you see what the hand of God is upon, even if you are a critic, you will know that there is God in what is happening. Hallelujah. What season in your life have you opened prematurely as a result of impatience? I know you are anointed MOG who asked you to start a healing ministry. You started gathering sick people and telling all of them, write what is wrong with you and lift it up. You want to become a great man. Everybody you laid hands on, nobody was healed. The people are angry. They are planning to beat you by the next healing service. You better go back to God and ask questions. Hallelujah. Many people have produced albums prematurely. They produce five albums, not even their immediate environment. No. They, they traveled abroad, took the albums, it didn't sell. Because the season. See, I taught you last week that favor is one of the clearest signs that God is with you. Hallelujah. Recognize that there is a due season. Sister, be delivered tonight. The husband will come. You are not the first to get married. Neither will you be the last. Brother, I know you are almost 30 years old. Relax. It's better to enter a profitable relationship at 30 than to enter nonsense that you sweat for three years before the arm of God will come to deliver you. Some of you see people in relationship and you admire them. Go and talk to them in truth and find out. Some of them, as they are going, they are just tired. They, it's just that they don't know what to do again with their lives. There is a child. They are already married. Say preparation. Many people want to drive cars. I must buy a car. I must buy a car. By force, the word of God is working. Nobody ever drove a car in my family. I must be the one and it must be this year. Calm down. Look, trust me. We prophesy all the time and my, my greatest joy is to see everyone blessed spiritually, financially, 
socially and so on and so forth but then God will judge me if I tell you that after prophecy it will just happen to you the next day it's not every aspect of your life that will happen like that there are seasons everybody says seasons there is seed there is time there is harvest let's hurry up number two every time you are about to get weary because the waiting period to your breakthrough is so long and it looks like will God ever come will I ever get to Canaan after crossing the Red Sea while you are rejoicing thinking that's all you find out that there is another mighty battle waiting for you listen the second key is to meditate on the faithfulness of God meditate on the faithfulness of God so far count your blessings count your blessings it's amazing how we easily forget the things that God has done in our lives and we focus on the things that he has not done hallelujah oh lord this house is too small we are tired we need a change remember when you were managing with one room and that one room it was your friend that gave you although god has told you you are going to a new house but in the interim when impatience wants to set in when weariness wants to set in count the faithfulness of god where is the god that gave me a lion where is the God that gave me the bear? Oh God, I'm, I'm not eating hamburgers and all of this now, but Lord, I'm no more soaking Gary. At least I can eat once in a day that I paid by myself. In the dream, I saw four points. When the result came out, I saw 3.1. But Lord, I give you praise because it used to be 1.7 and you have helped me. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. It's easy for Satan to trivialize God's faithfulness in your life. Once in a while I have the opportunity to go to hospitals to see people. And, and then I, I pray for people once in a while. And I am humbled at the confidence of people in the midst of humanly speaking unchangeable situations hallelujah I have spoken to so many HIV patients in my life and you look at some of them and you humanly speaking you can say it's over you are counting days but you see the joy I remember speaking with one of the women very recently and this woman was rejoicing she said I now have a ministry and it was she did not even come for the counseling for healing she had so conquered it that for her to live is christ and to die is gain she was focusing on something else yet there is somebody shouting and arguing if the husband does not come in two months lord if i backslide let it be that is your fault are you hearing what i'm saying there are people who have been diagnosed oh you need to go to the hospital brothers and sisters and see people whose legs they've cut they amputated the legs and then you keep seeing them singing his faithfulness is forevermore a pretty lady who is not married already but she had an accident and one eye is gone are you getting my point and she says yes lord i thank you i'm alive if i can do nothing i can give god praise whereas a house close to that same street where the accident occurred there is a complainer and a murmurer shouting at god we are tired of eating spaghetti in this house my father only pays school fees shame on him at his age he cannot even give me five thousand my father is giving me one thousand you wait and see the one that it was with box and prophecy they sent them from the village to come to zaria one heavy echo like and prophecy may god be with you 
and he came and stopped at North Gate, not having one naira, yet they are in 300 level. When you see people worshiping Koinonia, everyone knows the story. We can wear suits and fake it, but everyone knows where the shoe is hurting. So don't let anybody stop your praise when it's time to worship God. They gave birth to them in a nice maternity world. They gave birth to you on the road. The faithfulness of God. You would have died within 24 hours. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Who is God speaking to tonight? You cried for years. Let the husband come. Now the husband has come. You are saying, Lord, I need a boy. I need a boy. I'm tired of three girls. On the other side, a woman is saying, Lord, anything, anything, boy or girl, whatever, I am grateful. Just one. I don't need two. I just need a consolation. That I am a woman. What to do? This is one big secret of my life. You never find me frowning and wondering what will my tomorrow be me? God has done too much in my life. I can begin to count on the faithfulness of God till my time of manifestation comes and it will not finish. Hallelujah. That's why by the grace of God, there is no reason for me to envy any man till I die. People challenge me, I am happy. But God has done too much in my life. I will be the most ungrateful person in my life if I ever try to trivialize what God has done. Sister, you are always complaining, but you forgot you are beautiful. There was there about beauty. Oh, may God change it for one day and you will know what is there about beauty. Are you kidding? Beauty took a woman from her village to become the king's wife. You never say, Lord, thank you. Every day somebody says, I'm fine. To an extent, when they say you're fine, say, please don't mock me. Hold on. See, let me tell you something. Ungratefulness is a terrible disease. It's sin before God. Refusing to acknowledge the things that he has done. Shine on me Your grace Your grace I'm nothing without you It's grace Your grace Shine on me Hallelujah You are there complaining Oh God, so I'm going to graduate with a pass. You wouldn't have given me the admission. Really? Really? You wait and find out students that were withdrawn in their second year or third year because they could not get a C, not an E, a C because of the nature of their program. Hallelujah. And they left school and went, and went to learn handwork and they are still grateful to God. Hallelujah. Can we take two minutes to count our blessings? Go ahead and do it. Just in two minutes and we'll continue. Think of when you were nothing, brothers and sisters. Oh, I know what God has done in my life. No amount of honor will fool me. No amount of grace. Some of us were called this. God saved us. Some of us, when God saved you, you could not even speak English. You know it. Your family is still living in a hut right now. But God has exalted you. Tell him thank you. Your grace, your grace, we're nothing without you. Those of us who have been in this ministry for a while, remember when we used to sit on the floor. Remember when we used to sit on the floor. Who is God speaking to tonight? You are a graduate and you are still complaining. How many graduates? 
does Nigeria produce in a year? I heard about a lady who had a ghastly motor accident today and died. How many of us have escaped accident? Armed robbers came to your house. They came to your neighbor's house. They came to your shop. Terrorists blew bombs in different places. Some of you saw it. You saw them. They pointed guns at you. But there was a hand of destiny that delivered you. When have you become ungrateful? Go ahead and pray. And say, Lord, although I have not seen what you will do yet, I have not seen the manifestation, but I thank you. I thank you. The God who did it for me before will do it again. The God who gave me a husband will give me a child. The God who gave me parents. The God who gave me admission will pay my school fees for next session. God who sustained my father without a job for 10 years. That God is able. God who sustained my mother without salary. She trained me to school. Where is that God? Where is the God that delivered you? When the doctors concluded about you, when that breast lump grew up, when, 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 that, when your, hair was, your hair was falling, where is that God that helped you? Some of our parents were sacked and God gave them better jobs. Have you forgotten the faithfulness of this God? Your grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Hallelujah. There are seven secrets the Lord gave me. And the Lord told me if I keep these secrets, Nothing will stop me from becoming what he has destined for me. One day maybe I will share them. But one of it is this that I've shared with you tonight. If you know how to take advantage of your testimonies, you will never, never become a victim of impatience. Let's hurry up. Number three. What to do while you wait for your due season? Employ the weapon of praise. Hiya. Many people do not know that praise is a weapon. Employ when, when you count your blessings, then you balance it up with praise. And see the devil that will stand to speak discouragement to you. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's hurry up. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's read from verse 17. And let's see what the prophet had to say. Habakkuk chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, this is what makes some people mighty. And they walk upon the earth as if Satan does not exist. There are revelations that empower men. Although, everyone look up, the fig tree shall not blossom. But at least there is a fig tree. Is that true? Neither shall fruit be in the vines, but at least there is a vine. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Somebody say, yet I will rejoice. The Wayek result did not come out well. Yet I will rejoice. I will joy in the God of what? The God that will bring that salvation. I will rejoice. Although nothing may seem to work, 
Some of you, as you go back right now to your homes, the truth is that there's nothing to eat this night. Yet, I will rejoice. I remember times in my life, I've told you, when I would buy bread and cut the bread and put granite uh, and close it and give thanks to the God of Israel because I knew that what was in me was greater than the restaurant greater than whatever can you sing the song he's playing now Sam what does the song say let's even understand the meaning of the song so that we know we are singing Igbo people what does he say Email. That's what I'm saying. What's the meaning? Thank you. Yeah? Thank you. For what? Thank you, Daddy. You've done well. God bless you. Email. Just worship God in one minute. Email. Oh, yeah. God of your salvation, thank you. Very quickly, Psalms 138, verse 1. Powerful scripture. I'm giving you the arsenals to go back and bulldoze the gates of hell and let the devil know that although you were almost gassing out, you came for koinonia tonight and that the oil will never run dry. He said, I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods, all the gods that want me to be weary. He said, I will praise you before the gods. I will sing praises. That means I will look at all of these options and I will dance before God and say, it's better for me to remain barren than to go to a herbalist to get a child. The weapon of praise. The weapon of praise. Let me hurry up because I want us to take at least five or ten minutes. Two more points and we'll round up. We have to praise God this night. Number four. What do you do while you wait for your due season? Number four. Look up. Begin to act like the future you see coming. While you wait, if you truly believe that you are going to enter that future, begin to act. If you think you are going to get into the palace, then start learning the language of royalty. It's the sign of faith that you are preparing. You believe you are getting married. Start behaving like a married woman, not a small girl. Change. Switch. Have the mindset. Develop the ideologies that conform to the new level you are entering. Start acting like the person you believe you are going to be. Develop the mindset. You believe you are going to be a multi-billionaire CEO. Start behaving like that. Don't behave like an arm robber. Don't read any nonsense you see on the internet. Compose yourself. Start carrying the traits of leaders. You believe you are going to be an exceptional leader. Start training yourself. Don't speak anyhow. Great men don't speak anyhow. Start learning the protocol of greatness. There is a protocol that leads you into the realm of greatness. You believe you are going to be standing before presidents. Start behaving well. With your plate of gari, use fork and knife and lead. No problem. Make your mistakes. You are doing it in the secret place. A day will come you will do the real one. For sure.
begin to act like your future. When Joseph, Joseph knew, he had seen it in the spirit, seen it in the dream, that a day will come, he will stand. The sun representing his father, the moon representing his mother, and 11 stars will bow to him. But then, his life was opposite what his destiny was saying. They threw him in the well, and he composed himself. He said, I'm a leader. I will learn the language of royalty. Listen, when they sold him for the equivalent of about $13 or so, that's the equivalent today. $13, you sell a human being. Were they so broke that they sold their brother to go away? But Joseph said, no problem. There's one song we used to sing before. You can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. We used to sing and jump with it during missions. Then in FCS, that you can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. Should I teach you? One minute. One, two, sing. You can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. They can take your coat. They can lie against you. They can scandalize you. That's taking your coat. But it will not touch your destiny. They can say you will never make it. No problem. That's taking your coat. It doesn't just mean till a woman comes to lie that you rape her. Whatever men do to impede your progress, they are taking your coat. But they can take your coat. They cannot touch your destiny. See, this must be your contemplations in the secret place. The cost of your future is preparation. The cost, the price, the cost for your future is your preparation. While you prepare for your due season, keep getting qualified for that future. You will never enter a future that you are not qualified for. I shared this last week. God will never bring you into a future you are not prepared for. So he will hold back that time so that your preparation will coincide with the comings of times and seasons. The period of waiting is the process that qualifies you for your future. Write it down. The period of waiting is the process. The trainings that you receive during that period of waiting is what qualifies you for the future. So your waiting period is a period of preparation. Everybody say my waiting period is my period of preparation. Say one more time. If God gave you the 5 million naira last year, he would have killed you. So God says, hold on. Just keep being faithful with the 100,000. Oh God, boy, my colleagues have 1 million. I said, no, none of your problem. Just wait. And then you keep building yourself. God, I want the level of anointing that will move mountains and do all of that. God will say, just, just keep moving your chair in the place of prayer. Your chair is small enough for you to move. When you can move that chair, you will move something else till you move mountains. David did not become a king in one day. There was a progression. Although he was anointed for the palace, there were seasons. Be faithful at your current level. When Joseph went to Potiphar's house, he was so exceptional. He didn't have to wait until he got to Pharaoh. He was faithful, excellent. So much so that Potiphar made him the head of everything. He walked like royalty. He talked what to make the wife of Potiphar to be attracted. You know, slaves had a way that they dressed. Their beds were long. They didn't have time to shave and look nice. But Potiphar's wife looked at Joseph and she, she was stripped. She said, come, I prefer this guy to my husband because he walks like royalty. Other slaves were moving his over. Wherever we die, 
Joseph said, I'm not dying in Egypt. I know that I've come to the place of royalty. Square up your shoulder and know that it only one of the most comforting scriptures for me in scripture in the Bible is, and it came to pass. Everybody say, and it came to pass. Powerful scripture. It never comes to stay. And it came to pass. You hear the Bible say it again. On the fifth day of this month and that and that and the word of the Lord came to pass. Hallelujah. How many of you are behaving like your future already? Don't raise your hand. Some of you are still behaving like your past. Because in the future, you will be too great to keep bitterness. But you are still keeping bitterness. Right from secondary school. Now you've met with the lady in university and you say, even till we die, you are still holding on to your past. You are prolonging your arrival. Because you are not preparing yourself to be qualified. Hallelujah. Your preparation is your report card that qualifies you for the future. Your preparation is your report card. You're diligent at this level. Number five. Oh, that's a beautiful song. We've not sang this song in a while. You think I'll sing it? Let's continue. I'm trying to rush. Number five. What to do while you are waiting for your due season? Look for problems to solve. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. We discussed that last year. No man ever enters greatness. You find favor with God through the fear of the Lord, through faith and through title. You find favor with men by solving problems. Joseph knew that he had the ability to solve problems. And he rejoiced. When he was in the prison, Potiphar's wife lied that he raped her. Said, no problem. The truth will come out. Because you can see, look at me. You become too cheap when you spend your time explaining yourself to critics. Are you getting me? You become too cheap. You make yourself too cheap. There are many of us who learn this now. Learn this now. It is easier to become great than to remain great. Look at me. Come, my sister. Let this girl buy a jeep now. That by next week, Koinonia, she comes with what jeep now? Car people. Huh? Ah, yeah, that, that has expired now. Who is thinking of all these masses? Praise God. Jaguar. No, let me say something realistic. CRV. Right? Honda CRV. 2014. Limited edition. And she comes with it. Do you know at once, all of a sudden, you will find fault with her hair? You will find fault with what she's wearing. Is it this place they put watch or here? You know why? Listen. People's progress often it has a way of choking and revealing our current weakness. It is a natural thing. You must learn how to celebrate greatness when you see it. That's the antidote to jealousy and having the heart of a critic. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even if this lady came from one village somewhere and all of a sudden she marries a millionaire and God just changes her life. There are people who say, eh, is this how to smile? She's not even behaving like a rich man's wife. Hold on. The truth is, it's not about her smile. Because if another millionaire comes to marry you too, you stop. You have now become colleagues in greatness. So no more criticism. Are you seeing that? I'm teaching you a principle. Every time people criticize you, understand their predicament. Don't be angry. Your success is doing something to them. Listen. Hold on. You were still doing the same thing before you got great. Why was it not an issue? That is today now, all of a sudden, 
Eh, Shedrach wants to show us he's wearing shoe of 20,000. Who doesn't have it? If not because of my father, will I not be wearing it? No problem. Listen. Deliver yourself from the spirit of criticism by celebrating greatness when you see it. Oh, Shedrach, this is beautiful. You are looking smart. Wow, wonderful. You are coming. God bless you. You hardly criticize those you truly celebrate. Are you getting my point? Please, learn this. Every time you see God doing a good thing in someone's life, many of our parents are like that. You just saw one doctor, one professor in ABU. He just changed the fifth car. Say, keep dropping the money of the institution. It's all that. Get out of that attitude of cynicism and learn to celebrate. Because you are sowing seeds that will speak for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't spend your time trying to respond to critics. You say, hey, you have started palming your hair. You want all the colonial guys to see you. No problem. Just continue doing what you are doing. And truly they will see you. And marry and leave the person criticizing you. Problems are gates, right? Problems are not walls. They are gates. Problems are doors. Begin to view problems as gates. It exits you from one season and brings you into another. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. All the bruises inflicted by this is your past now. Hallelujah. You never learned this song for how many years? Those of us who are new are lost. The old people didn't used to sing, they'll just keep chewing their mouth. The moment you say, Heal all the wounds inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Problems are opportunities for significance. When God wants to announce you, he seduces problems for you to solve. Until you solve a problem, you are not known by anybody. You remain insignificant. Until there was Goliath, David was not known. Until the king had a dream, Joseph was not needed. Problems are opportunities for your significance. Problem solving guarantees your success. Please write. I'm showing you the things to do that will bring you into your due season. Problem solving guarantees your success. Write this down. Problem solving creates your distinction from others. Everybody will look at you the same way they are looking at everybody until an ability to solve problem distinguishes you. Sovereign Problem solving sets you apart. It distinguishes you. It makes your difference to be seen. Problem solving makes you known. You will remain in the wilderness until the problem you solve announces you. When you do this, you can rejoice knowing that a due season is coming. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. Brothers and sisters, as I look at us here, I see people who are bigger than Nigeria. I see people who are bigger than, than West Africa. There is an anointing within you. Some of you are sitting down here. Nobody, look, let me tell you. I have learned from experience that there are all kinds of gifted people scattered in this house. You may just sit down and watch people. I remember when I was marking the exams of the, the 
the first set of the, the students, the school of ministry, my goodness. Those guys were trained under quite some harsh condition. They had like six months of strike and all of that. For a four-month program, they spent close to a year. When I was marking their exams, I was even afraid. I said, these guys did not do well. I was shocked. I tell you, some people wrote that exam as if it's magnet. And it's a kind of exam that you can even carry your, your, your notes and write it and you'll still form it. And I learned once again, brothers and sisters, the person sitting close to your side may be a genius that is bigger than this realm. It's only a matter of time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Forget about the board, what the board has told you. 1.1, 2.2, 3.3, hold on. You are bigger than that. But will you wait for your season of appearance? Or will you get so intimidated? There are many people who sit down and say, I'm bigger than this level. So I will move myself. That's the greatest danger. There are some of you that are doing jobs of 20,000. But the truth is that even if they pay you 1 million naira, they have insulted you based on what you have. Continue doing the 20,000 naira job. Qualify yourself for the greater seasons that are coming. Hallelujah. There are some of you when you sit in class with your colleagues. Academically speaking, you may not be the best students. But there is so much in you. Don't worry. Don't try to announce yourself. Relax. A day will come, God will speak and say, This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved kingdom millionaire. This is my beloved apostle. This is my beloved prophet. This is my beloved pastor. And he will command the world to hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very, very important. We're going to do two things very quickly. In the next five minutes, please, I want everybody to participate in this. We're going to enter such a realm of prophetic worship. We're just going to thank God for the season that he has even brought us. Thank him for the things Please worship him, prepare yourselves. Thank him for the things that he has done. And thank him for what he's going to do. I don't know how you are going to worship God and praise God tonight. And then after that, we will pray and prophesy and receive grace from God. This message you are hearing, you will play it again and again in the future when you sit on the throne of greatness and you will cry because you will thank Rise up on your feet, everyone.
Hallelujah. We'll pray some prayer points right now. I'd like you to start this prayer session with a dangerous prophecy about your destiny. I don't know what the devil has spoken to you. I don't know what options you are about to take. But right now, lift your voice and begin to speak. And say, I'm not giving up. My God is alive. Go ahead. Pray. No way. No giving up. The prophet is still above my head. There's no giving up. I may fail, but I will rise again. There's no giving up. The hand of God is upon me. I'm an object of praise. Oh, protect it. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. My destiny is before me. There is a generation waiting for me. There's no turning back. I may cry, but there's no turning back. I may weep, but there's no turning back. There is an anointing upon me. There is a prophecy upon my life. Though he slay me, yet will I praise him. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. There is hope for a dream, even though it is cut off at the scent of water. Will fall again. Prophesy. There's hope for my family. There's hope for my marriage. There's hope for my academics. To him that is joined with the living, there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Go protect it. Cause the spirit of discouragement. Cause the spirit of impatience. Cause the spirit of discouragement. That business can arise again. That marriage can arise again. Your CGPA can arise again. Although you are in final year, it's not too late. Samson, your eyes may be plucked out, your hair may be cut off, but there is a new season. Devi, remain in the wilderness. The day of your announcing is coming. Come on, pray. Pray, Koinonia. Make investment for your destiny. Shake it, take it, take it, I refuse to give up. I refuse to give up. No compromise. Hallelujah. Two prayer points and we'll round up. The next prayer point is that you're going to cry for grace. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, if because of the fierceness of the season of waiting, you now say, I will marry any man. I will take any job. Okay, I will go to the harbor list. I will ask God for forgiveness later on. I will sleep with the boss. Let me just get the work. I'd like you to shout, no way. Shout it, no way. Listen, the three Hebrew boys said, Oh king, we are not careful to speak to you in this matter. Our God, whom we serve, will deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, we are going to pray. i like you to say, Oh God, tonight, give me the finisher's anointing. Give me the finisher's anointing. One more time, I will push. Come on, open your mouth and pray. The finisher's anointing. Rekete koto papa. Man te po rekete. The anointing.
The finisher's anointing. Koinonia, pray. You are almost there. Don't give up. When your season is about unveiling, don't give up. You paid the price for 10 years, for 5 years. You paid the price. You paid the price. Lord, give me the finisher's anointing. Like Samson, I will finish. Like Samson, I receive the finisher's anointing. They may criticize me, but I will give up. Oh, God, 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 come on, out of faith. I receive the finisher's anointing. They may call me more than leader. But I will keep walking in holiness and diligence. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. Till my change comes. I and happens to them. Wait. Wait. They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. They shall renew their strength. They shall come down with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh my soul, wait thou upon the Lord. Oh my soul, wait thou upon the God of your salvation. Though thy beginning be small. But your latter end shall be great. Though thy beginning be small. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord, when they are strength, when they are almost casting out, suddenly. When the devil is celebrating the finishing of the oil, a prophetic word brings it back again. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. I like us to prophesy and say, Lord, I will become what you have shown me. Nothing will stop me. I'm on my way coming, prophesy. Go put Tokata. I will become that prophet that you have told me. I will become that great man. That great woman. I prophesy. I send a prophecy to my destiny. Vienna, you will enter your realm of greatness. Koinonia, you will only rise from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from prosperity to prosperity. One level of the anointing of Prophesy, I call my family blessed. I call my loved ones blessed. I call my destiny blessed. The hand of the Uber that has started this work. The hand of the Uber that started this ministry. The hand of the Uber will complete it at the shout of praise. The shout of praise. The shout of praise. It is not by power. It is not by might. There is an ability of the spirit. There is an ability of the spirit. To is the finish of the Lord. I will enter the time of greatness. Men will celebrate me. The anointing is speaking. Commanding favor. Doors are opening. For me. Changes come to my life. Things to the brightness of my life. My gates are continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Hallelujah. 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 I feel like adding just one more prayer point. We are going to pray specifically for the finances of our lives and our loved ones. Are you ready to pray? Two prayer points. Under that just at once. Cause the powers. Are you getting me? I told you there are some delays that are not godly. There are some waitings that are delays. I like you to cause the powers 
and release increase. How many people are ready to pray? Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I stand as an ambassador of the kingdom and I plead the blood of Jesus over everything that speaks against the prosperity of my life and my family. Lift up your head, O ye gates. And be ye lifted, O ye ancient doors. Lift your voice and speak. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. you are about to fall out in this season and compromise I cost that power now in the name of Jesus Christ every other voice you've been listening to that is not the voice of his majesty tonight we silence that voice in the name of Jesus every wrong relationship wrong association wrong business, wrong ties in the name of Jesus Christ that is giving Satan access to destroy you. Be delivered from it now. Be delivered from it now. Be delivered from it now. I pray for you. Where your strength is almost failing, tonight, receive a supply of strength. A supply that will last you until you arrive in the mighty name of Jesus that when men say there is a casting down for you you will say there is a lifting up and I speak over everything in your life that is dead that the devil has told you there is no hope in the name that is above all names I command those dry bones Come alive now. Come alive now. That dying CGPA. Come alive now. That dying family. Come alive now. That dying marriage. Come alive now. For your expectations shall not be cut short. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 
celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please remain standing. There are people here tonight who are saying, man of God, I need to make my ways right with the Lord. I love him, but I've not made a commitment to walk with him. And there are yet others who are saying, I've given my life to Christ before, but for whatever reason, I've found myself walking in ways that are not of God, and I need to retrace my step right now. We're out of time. In just one minute, if you belong to any of these categories, I'd like you to leave your seats. Don't be ashamed and come out here right now. I want to pray for you. Go ahead. You're hearing the voice of the Lord. Don't remain on your seat inside and outside, wherever you are. Don't wait for anybody to come out. You are the first person. God bless you. God bless you. The Lord is speaking to people. When you hear his voice, do not sit back. Do not sit back. God bless you. God bless you. This is where it all starts. God bless you. Keep coming. We have just one minute for this. God bless you. Make sure you don't sit back. This is about your life. This is about your destiny. God bless you. Keep coming. Thank you so much, those of you who are here. This is the greatest decision you would ever make. In one minute, I'd like you to lift your right hand. Come and join them. God bless you. I know they are still coming. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you and I love you with all my heart. I make up my mind to live for you from today and for the rest of my life. Join them, my brother. I denounce sin and Satan and I receive the gift of eternal life into my spirit. I declare in the name of Jesus that I'm a child of God. I'm saved. The life of God is in me. In the name of Jesus. I release every one of you from whatever has held you. I don't care what mistakes you have made. I don't care where you have missed it. Tonight in the name of Jesus you are released. I curse that power that holds you down. And I release you in the mighty name of Jesus to experience the way, the very life of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare you saved. I declare you free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for making this glorious decision. Bless you. Please, I'd like you to follow the usher waving his hands. They'll have your information and you'll be back. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. If this is your first time tonight worshiping with us here at Koinonia, we love you and we have a blessing and a prophecy for you. Please leave your seat and just run out here very quickly. If you brought anybody, now is the time to push them forward. You love them too much to allow them without this prophecy. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Very quickly, we're out of time. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, Koinonia, celebrate them. You can do better than this. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord brought you by His mighty hand. He brought you to change you. He brought you to transform your life. Please keep coming. Don't stop. Koinonia is a sacrifice of appreciation. Thanking the Lord for what He has done. Hallelujah. I want to thank all of you. Thank you so much for making our time to worship with us. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. God is doing great things in our midst. Thank you so much for taking the time to come. We want to bless you and prophesy. We are anointed and when we speak over your life, it follows you. Hallelujah. Saints of God, stretch your hands and prophesy. Influence their destiny with the power of prophecy. We command in the name of Jesus Christ that you are experiencing the hand of God, you are experiencing the grace of God. Every challenge you came here with, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we cause that power, we cause that power, we cause that power. In the name of Jesus, we release you to experience the life of God in its fullness. We bless you with hunger for the things of the Spirit. We bless you with the grace of God. It's multiplied to you through knowledge. Every habit, every... Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him 
that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.